While Ireland began to grow, industries found here everything they might need. Water power from the rivers, coal to produce the steam for industrial engines, people who were industrious and used to machinery, and a transport system in the shape of the canal, which in the first half of the 19th century came into its own, carrying a steady flow of imported goods and exported products. Industries multiplied, and one of the staple foods which nourished the revolution also fed Coal Island, iron. Iron which could help to shape the earth and the future. There had been a spade mill in Coal Island since 1831, when it was founded by James Leckie. By 1843 it was employing 16 men and turning out 1,600 dozen spades and 16 tonnes of shovel plate a year and at one time producing 240 different varieties of spade. The great trip hammers which beat out the metal were driven by three water wheels powered by the river. John Stevenson bought the mill in 1860 and made improvements to cope with the increasing demand. In fact the mill carried on production until after World War II and closed in 1950. The mill was then taken down and reconstructed as part of the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum at Coultra, County Down. The linen industry which had helped to nourish the new coal mines in the early 19th century had finally found one of its homes in East Tyrone. The factory continued to flourish with the outbreak of the Second World War and the winning of government contracts. During the 50s and 60s, even with the slump in the cotton trade closing many factories, the Coal Island factory continued to produce fine linens until 1977 when fire destroyed much of the plant. A spinning mill, one of the most advanced in Ireland, was also built to produce yarn from Jerome flax. Here, the native flax was sorted and spun into yarn which would go into Irish linen. The mill flourished until the Great Depression when, like so many of its contemporaries, it closed. In 1857, the railway came to Coal Island and the flourishing town was now a true part of the industrial world. Industry upon industry came to Coal Island, drawing their workforces from the local population and employing hundreds of people. Coal Island was now a true centre of commerce and the canal which had given it life now came into its own offering cheaper transport costs than its rival, the railway. It imported raw materials, corn for the flour mills, iron for the spade works, and exported bricks, tiles and earthenware, packed in straw and destined for the still growing city of Belfast. The businesses which had begun as mere cottage industries continued to grow and flourish, and the natural features which had attracted them attracted others.